Welcome to Coffee with Joe for Thursday, May 26, 2011, the weekly, we hope, video vlog of the Kettle Pond Institute for Debt-Free Money, yep. featuring Joe Bongiovanni down there in Harberton, Virginia, and myself, Pete Young, here in Plainfield, Vermont. In the continuing saga of uh, the United States government and its debt problems, our entire economy and its debt problems, which is, uh, to a certain yeah. extent, the... Uh, the end throws of the debt, debt money system here that we're seeing right now. The That's way right, we dude. see it in the news is around this issue of will Congress raise the debt limit? Will the Republicans block raising the debt limit? Um, then we have uh, Bill Clinton. He was at a Pete Peterson conference, and he was quoted there saying that a brief debt default might not be calamitous. A brief debt default. So I think for the average guy on the street, the average person on the street, um, some confusion about what is the relationship between uh, not raising the debt limit or Congress raising the debt limit and us defaulting on our debt or not. My understanding is other payments of the government would stop quicker than uh, payment interest payments on U.S. debt, which is what a true debt default would be. A debt default right. is when we stop... Uh, making the interest payments on on our debt on treasuries. Exactly. Um, exactly. But I believe it's set up so that we'd stop paying Social Security checks before we stopped uh, making payments on the U.S. debt. So I don't think a debt default is even in, is even the question. You know, Pete, nobody that I know of in the Congress, those are our elected representatives, really has a good handle on what this uh, what the debt debt money situation is what the national debt situation is, why do we have national debt, why there's a debt ceiling. So you got this Bill Clinton, you know, I think the Oxford, you know, trained and educated, uh, you know, mastermind, okay. He's totally personally responsible, okay, even though, he, you know, he had somewhat of a mixed Congress. Totally personally responsible for the problems of the deficit, Pete, okay, that the government not have the money. How? By his deregulation of financial services industry, Pete, okay? By allowing the shadow bankers to come in and to exist and to blow up the national economy to the point where the federal government doesn't have the revenue that needs. So here's the causal guy coming in there and making this statement, which shows just how friggin' ignorant, you know, he is. He was ignorant when he made those changes. He's ignorant as to the, as to the national debt, as to the debt ceiling and what the impact is. And he wanted to come out and say something and, you know, he, he came out and you know, put both feet in his mouth and, you know, his spokesperson needed to come out and say, oh, that was a misstatement, you know. Uh, but but let's talk about the debt ceiling first, Pete, okay, the debt ceiling. Why, why is there a legislated debt ceiling? Most countries in the world don't have a legislated debt ceiling, Pete, okay. There's nothing that's out there that tells them. Why? Because when they develop their budgets, their annual budgets, they determine the amount that's going to be received in taxation and the amount that's going to re be received through the issuance of debt and whatever other mechanisms might be out there, okay? And they adopt it. And in so doing, in one fell swoop, it's done, Pete, okay? Uh, and that's how we used to do it, you know? That's how we used to do it in this country. So, so that, in effect, because we established a debt limit, you know, and the fact that we needed to, by virtue of, funding, the deficit spending to increase it every year. The Congress had to increase the debt ceiling every year. So they just went and said, no, let's just set a debt ceiling way out there. And then when we come up to it, you know, we'll review it. Well, what's happening right now is, you know, the politics of today, you know, which are so dastardly, you know, wrong, has the, has the uh, Republicans first controlling the budgeting process, you know, Pete, uh, to, to, to knock everything down so that there's not even really room for the government to actually do its job of serving the people of this country. But then they have the audacity, you know, to not stand up to the commitment that they just made by adopting that budget and by, and by the fact that there exists, you know, what they call the government budget constraint, which says that today the government needs to borrow the money that it doesn't make have for taxation in order to... So... We have this totally asinine, backwards, upside down system uh, with regard to debt money, Pete, okay? 
And the people in the Congress don't understand it. Because if they did, first thing they'd do is to, is to do away with the debt ceiling thing, recognize the responsibility of Congress is to fund the budget. Because if they don't fund the budget, what are they really doing, Pete? Okay? So, so, so they, would, they would take that, that kind of a step. But more importantly, Pete, okay, the question has to come up, why do we issue national debts anyway? Why does the government, which has the power to create money in the first place, uh, resort and put in place, that same government puts in place, legislates this government budgetary constraint, Pete, okay? We have the power to create the money. We create the Federal Reserve and, and give them the power to create all money as a debt. Then we create the budgetary constraint that says the government has to borrow whatever it doesn't collect in taxes. Then we have, have, the, have the ability of the, of the uh, power brokers, and the power brokers are that same group, Pete, you know, the Peterson group, okay, that, that, that get to say, well, under this kind of a situation, you know, we're going to have to, we're gonna have to cut down on everything else. And that goes to your point, okay? No, the people that, the, the, the bond traders are going to get paid, you know? It's going to be somebody else that's going to suffer under this, under this ridiculous thing. But again, because we have a debt money system, it's absolutely essential that the government issue debt, Pete. It's absolutely essential. The government cannot, if the government didn't issue debt, if we didn't have a national instrument of, of, our, of our monetary unit that the government, that the, uh, the bank and the central bank and the bankers could use to trade in order to adjust the money supply, it wouldn't work. So we have to have it. So then all of it, you know, comes down to, oh, well, then really, Pete, this all comes down to the big question. Why do we have this debt money system? And why can't we fix it and replace it and fix all of these problems, Pete, in one fell swoop? Fix the, fix the problems of the deficit, fix the problems of the national debt, fix the problems of, of a, 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 you know, an unjust a uh, money system where the bankers, you know, the, the big bankers get to take the money and do whatever they want with it before anything else happens. The whole thing, Pete, is is upside down. And you got, you know, again, you got our heroes, you know, the Democratic heroes like Bill Clinton, you know, uh, who, who the media, I mean, they don't, because the media has no idea of it either, Pete, you know, they just go and play whatever, a parrot, whatever, uh, you know, people like Clinton say. But we really need to get back to what does the, constitutes the monetary system of the country in order to, you know, do that. And that is kind of my only hope here, Pete. My only hope here is that somebody's sitting around saying, well, wait a minute, something is wrong with this. You know, something's wrong with this picture, you know. And it's not just those laws and it's not just those regulations, Pete. It's systemic and structural. It has to do with the debt nature of the money system. So in, uh, 19, in the 1920s, when Edison and Ford gathered at Muscle Shoals and said, why issue debt to build this, you know, public infrastructure project? Issue it in currency instead. Pay for it in currency instead. That same principle holds true today, Pete. And that's what exactly what we should be doing. Well, Joe, uh, why that is not happening is, uh, I mean, the, the short answer is, People, you got to look a little bit below the surface, uh, pretty far below the surface, to even start to understand this, even what a monetary system is, okay? Um, but then beyond that, um, when people hear about this idea of the government issuing the money, they get immediately scared of the idea. I mean, uh, inflation comes up immediately. How could you limit it? You know, what would, what would limit the size of government? Wouldn't government just get to be huge and overbearing in our lives? We, we don't trust ourselves to have that power. All those things are very real, and all those things are, you know, need to be discussed, which is why, you know, if the Kucinich bill ever goes forward, you know, we, we would try to do that. But the problem, Pete, is that we never get the option. We never get the option of deciding, because if we had the option of deciding, then we would, have, we would have the two on the one hand and on the other hand. What could we gain? What would, what would it cost us? Then we could decide, but we never get to decide it because the people that control the money system have the power of the government, you know, in their hands. They have the power of the government in their hands, and so it's hard for us to come knocking on their door.